World Sports Action present the official Football League video, the Coventry City story, 1988-89. Coventry City are a first division force to be reckoned with. The squad must be just about the best equipped in the club's history. David Speedy has matured into an outstanding all-round footballer. He excelled in midfield and got some great goals. Enjoy now once again the Sky Blues season. In comes Dougie Maguire from Celtic for £40,000. Out goes Nick Pickering to Derby County for a quarter of a million. On the opening day of the season, the game at Tottenham was postponed because of building work. The grounds deemed unsafe for the fans. So Everton at home is the opening fixture. Smith, We're giving Nevin a taste of his own medicine and McDonald too. This is David Smith going on, brought down by a combination of Watson and McDonald. Coventry have a penalty. Brian Kilcline loves to blast them. And Southall seemed to move early to me, but the save stands. Regis jumping for this one and beating Watson. Bannister! Oh, that's a terrific save by Southall, changing direction. McDonald. It's a deep one, and Cotty's reached it. Tony Cotty! For two million pounds, well, he's got four goals in a game and a half. Downs. And Southall was there again. Phillips. And David Phillips took that bravely. And might have made a chance here for Coventry Regis. Well, that's a disappointing start, but now Coventry City get the season rolling. Three successive victories, starting at Sheffield Wednesday. Trevor Peak with the kick. Regis jumping, and he scored! Cyril Regis, Coventry go in front. Plenty of vocal backing for Coventry now. Regis jumping again, here's Bannister. Still Gary Bannister, here's Smith, Speedy, oh that's a marvellous goal from David Speedy. <laughs> 2 0 Coventry now and they love playing here at Hillsborough, won an FA Cup semi-final in dramatic fashion against Leeds a couple of years ago and in control here now. Or are they? Here's Hurst. Still Hurst. He's got all the way. 2-1. Within a minute, they've got one back. Back at Highfield Road, Charlton's versatile Steve Grit made a Southall-like save from Cyril Regis. Grit had put on the jersey when Bob Boulder was injured. But in the second half, David Smith beat him after 56 minutes and put the first home win of the season well within range. 14 minutes later, it was 2-0. Gary Bannister off the mark. And it became three goals inside 20 minutes when Smith steered in his second. Two victories in a row for Coventry. Next stop, Wimbledon. Greg Brown's directing operations. Speedy's got away from his marker and Bannister. That's very healthy, early in the season, Coventry are sixth, with a game in hand over the top five. In the second round of the Littlewoods Cup, a comprehensive victory over Bournemouth, 4-0 at Dean Court. Downs, a couple from Mickey Ginn and Bannister are the goal scorers. In the return at Highfield Road, it's 3-1, so 7-1 on aggregate and seven more goals for you now as Middlesbrough come to Highfield Road. Bannister. A fine pass from Sedgley. This is Smith. Gary Parkinson's the defender, and Smith has left him standing. There's Speedy! 
Great start for Coventry. Ripley. Hamilton. Middlesbrough have certainly got to come out now, and Bernie Slaven has done just that. An instant reply. Ripley. The free kick taken very quickly. Coventry caught flat footed. And Grizovic to the rescue. Slaven. He's got two. Middlesbrough have got two. Slaven, well everything he's hit has ended up past the Grizovic, it's 3-1, and Slaven has a hat-trick. Bernie Slaven can do no wrong. A foul by Speedy, and David Speedy adds to his disciplinary problems. A yellow card. Bannister. That was good play. Speedy! Well, Middlesbrough have started in the second half with plenty of the verb they showed in the first. And Mark Buck coming in, and he's tucked in number four. Coventry pulled apart again. Well, Coventry have got nothing to lose now. The odds stacked against them, but David Smith full of optimism. Speedy, great cross, well angled header, 4 2. Smith and that was Brennan well the more Coventry can get the ball to the left hand side the more dangerous they've looked but Bannister goes infield this time and looks to bend one it's a great advertisement for the first division Coventry won't be too pleased with it. Ripley, Slaven, it's Ripley, and only a Grizovic at full stretch prevented it being five. Regis, good jump, peak right in there. They're appealing again for a penalty, Smith. Speedy, it's a hat-trick, all of them headers, the second hat-trick of the game. There's an immediate chance to take revenge on the North East with a trip to St James's Park, Newcastle. Regis, nice touch. Burrows is well forward, here's Regis again. Lovely goal. Beautifully carved out. Downs. Regis jumping. Speedy. Two for Coventry. Smith with far too much space on that far side from Newcastle's point of view. That's a good stop by Besant. Gin. Three first half goals for Coventry now and a disaster for Newcastle. a really good start Norwich Millwall then Coventry in third place 12 points from six games but now suddenly and sadly the goals dry up against quality opposition Smith well, he has got a few tricks in his locker and a lovely crosser of a ball too speedy knocking it down for Jin plenty of yellow shirts back for Millwall Sedgley being hustled unfairly and taking the free kick quickly. It might still put Coventry in. Millwall wrong-footed by that. Up goes Horn. And 
pounces on the ball. He's fouled in the air there as uh, he and Regis jump for it. Good spell that by Coventry. Speed is cross. At five foot ten, he's lacking a few inches, his horn, but his judgment was okay. Oh, what a ball that by Bannister. Jin scuttling away on the far side. He's got support from fullback Burrows, but doesn't need it. The cross is in, and uh, Morgan was right down on his knees there to get that behind for the Coventry corner. The pace has quite clearly quickened now. The time being watched by Cascarino at that near post. Trying to show himself for this corner. Horn fisting it away. Mickey Jin again, crossing it in. And the header is just wide from Gary Bannister. Jin's cross. Bannister's header, as you can see, a yard and a half wide. Here's Burrows. Interesting, that's a good strike. He wasn't too far away. Regis stretching. He's got Burrows forward supporting. Jin! Hooper got across well. Beardsley. And again, oh brilliantly done. Rush! Should have scored! Denison, Barnes on the far post, Agrizovic has lost that. Beardsley's header and Coventry surviving more by luck than judgment. Speeding. He's lost it, no foul given, this is Thomas, and he's found the top corner. From a good 20 yards. And now Coventry go out of the Littlewoods Cup in the third round. A 3-2 defeat at Nottingham Forest. Bannister and Kilcline get the Sky Blues goals. Back in the league, West Ham are the next visitors, as followed by Luton, and then a return to the city ground to play Forest. First of all, the Hammers at home. Kevin Keane, nicely done. Ward, Dickens is stealing through the middle, and that's a good run by Potts. Here is Dickens, against the post, Kelly! That'll do his confidence, no harm at all. Downs, Bannister jumping. Emson. Oh, it'll come for Regis, who must score, surely! Yes! There's a flag on the far side. Emerson battling away again. He's gone all the way. Good stop. Burrows. That's a good cross. Speedy jumping. McKnight just got his fingertips to it. But Coventry have done everything so far except score. What now? Burrows. Nine minutes left. Smith, Thompson, and McKnight beaten at last by the substitute, Keith Thompson. Johnson, Harford's the target. Oh, Harford again. Agrizovic did well. Breakdowns. Oh, well, Foster's missed that, and Regis is in. Can he score? Denied by Les Seeley. Burrows, good turn. Here's Smith. Roger on the far side, and the big defender puts Coventry in front.
Costa on Regis and the referee who was right on the spot saw nothing wrong with it. Clough, that's a lovely change of direction. He doesn't have telling pace, but he certainly has class, Nigel Clough. Crosby against Downs as he passed him. It's the inside of the post across the face of the goal and behind for the goal kick from Gary Crosby. After Nigel Clough had really sparked off the move. And then it was one on one, Crosby against Downs. Crosby had the trick and the shot, but Coventry had a post to save them. Wilson, it's an interesting pass. It's a good pass too. Clough, the Grizzovich has lost it and no one following in. In fact, only Clough moved. And he'd had the first shot from the edge of the area. Chapman. Downs getting back. Chapman is past him. His Hodge! Well, they've done everything but finish. It's only one win in the last six games. Coventry slip to seventh place with 19 points. And now Coventry play the game that should have kicked off the season at Spurs, and then it's a Midlands derby against the bogey team, the Villa. Gascoigne will take. That's aimed at Butters. Stewart. Mitchell Thomas is in there. And Stewart again. Paul Stewart back in the groove. Three in two games for him. David Speedy. And Coventry pouring forward here. Phillips with some space. And there are men over on the far side. Houchin's one of them. 1-1. One, one. Keith Houchin. Love scoring against Tottenham. Peak. And here's Regis. And he scored. Big Cyril Regis. 1 0 Coventry. Burrows over that ball, too. It's his kick. Aimed at David Speedy, who got up well. And Houchin makes it 2 0. Smith, robbed by Gage. And Gray's on his way, nicely done. And again, oh, it's a terrific run, and McAnally makes it 2 1, but what a terrific run by Andy Gray. Just to underline that piece of Coventry City history, the win against the Villa, the first for 50 years. And that means confidence is pretty high for the next match. It's a trip to London to play QPR. Maguire. And it might drop for Francis. It has! His eighth goal of a season that really is defying his critics. Brock. Coney's at the far post and gets it back. And hooked in by Mark Falco. Pete came across. Obviously aware that Faraday's pace could cause a great danger to the Coventry goal, although they were up on the halfway line. And that's going to be a booking for Trevor Peake. No, it's a red card. Speedy's in the clear. It's been pulled back to 2-1 by the 10 men. The next fixture always pulls in a huge crowd. It's one of the highlights of the season. Manchester United at Highfield Road. Regis. Speedy. Now Borrows. For Regis! Well, it's some ten years ago in a very famous First Division game that Cyril Regis helped run Manchester United ragged in his West Bromwich Albion days. Albion winning 5-3 at Old Trafford. And he was talking about that day before the game and looking forward to this match with relish. Hughes with one of those excellent turns. 
McClare likewise. And that was a fine piece of inspiration then from Brian McClure. Trying to catch Agrizovic a little cold. Taking the shot very early indeed. Once he'd made space for himself. But Agrizovic did see it coming. Phillips, ooh, sharp, overcommitted. Only took a boot away from Phillips. Could have been worse. And so far, Houchin and Regis have had a fair amount of success in the air. Archin again wins it, and Leighton, it's off the line, but surely that was a foul on the goalkeeper by Speedy. But Manchester United are having a difficulty here. They can't win the first ball. Houchin got up so well. Uh, Speedy and Regis impeding the goalkeeper. Oh, Robson with a free header. And it was a good header too. The Coventry marking simply dissolved away. And they relied on the goalkeeper. Strachan again. Robson again. Waging a personal war on the Coventry goal. And he still retains this capacity to lose a defender and get there first. Out by Hughes. Borrows. Looking for Regis. Finding Cyril Regis. Donaghy stopped it full blast. There, but Speedy was in an offside position, and that's why it's not a corner. Planted into space by Phillips, and Houchin first to the ball again. Forcing a corner. Well, he does look like a man who only really unveils his best on the big occasion. Occasionally in run-of-the-mill league matches, he looks a little lethargic. That hasn't been the case here. Off the top of the bar. With Kill Klein in the centre of pack of players around the near post. Kilklein did get the last touch. Strachan. Hughes will chase. Oh, and Pig's under hit it, and Mark Hughes! Nine goals in his last 11 league games before today. And a chance to keep his prolific run going. Presented to him by Peak, Denied to him by Grizovic. Speedy. Strachan. Capitalising on another mistake by Coventry. McClare! One of those whipped shots in with hardly any backlift. In fact, Brian Robson was fancying his chances. Coming on to it a little squarer to goal. Speedy's error. Strachan found McClare. Look at Robson's positioning, but McClare was entitled to shoot himself. Houchin in there, and it's off the line, it would have been an own goal. The clearance was by Blackmore. Coventry coming so close again. Smith. For Regis. Both Saul Regis and Jim Layton launched themselves at it. 
and the goalkeeper came second. And that only moments after he'd been grateful to Clayton Blackmore clearing off the line. And then when Smith whipped it back in, in came Regis. Burrows leading the charge again for Coventry. Halchin is there. Well, I would say it's a game with an above average tally of strikes at goal. But it's a below average scoreline. Smith, Downs and Houchin deceived each other, Gill has to turn, the way back to the goalkeeper was barred, Houchin, Sharp didn't want to play it for the corner. In fact, he might have done better had he knocked it behind. Bruce Sedgley. And Manchester United swarm out again. And here's Strachan. McClare's onside. Strachan finds him. Chance here for Manchester United. McClare. Well, the match continues to throw up the opportunities. Hughes, past Sedgley. But Brian McClare possibly could have gone on a little further. But from being under the collar, Manchester United sprang forward. Claire brought Agrizovic into the action again. Downs, Houchin. Here's Smith. Can he take on Gill? He does. This is really what the Coventry fans want to see. It's produced a corner. David Smith, who made his first league appearance against Manchester United, only back in February, so he's not had a full year of League football, already in England under 21 international. A natural left winger. Well, Houchin diverted it away. Speedy anticipated. He gets it back. And a goal! Cyril Regis. It's been a long wait and they were beginning to run out of hope. Manchester United couldn't deal originally with the corner. And when it came back, Regis there before Houchin with a thumping header. Textbook stuff. Authentic strikers play from Cyril Regis. Here's the table. Coventry have moved back into third place, just four points off the top team Norwich, and they're above Liverpool as well. More good news. Dave Bennett signs a new contract, and he's back in the squad for the first time in nine months. And Steve Grizovic, so popular, also signs a new contract. He'll be at Highfield Road for another three years. But the Christmas New Year period isn't a good one for Coventry. They manage just one point from three games. That's against Southampton. First, though, it's defeat by Derby County. A cheer for Derby here. Handball awarded against Keith Houchin. A penalty after only five minutes. Nigel Callahan takes it. Steve Grizovic making a marvellous save. Coventry have made David Speedy their new captain. He did his level best from Cyril Regis's knockdown header to put his side in front.
Another close shave for Derby with Speedy and Regis involved again. Keith Houchin spinning into the shot that hits the post. But Peter Shilton, helped by his woodwork, gave a formidable performance. Two minutes into the second half, a chance for Paul Goddard. Close to his target, but unable to find it. And seven minutes later, Derby in front. Was that handball by Dean Saunders? It certainly looked it. Coventry hesitated, Saunders didn't, and he took the chance with a flourish. Derby wrapped it up with another stylish goal from another colourful character, Ted McMinn, the Scotsman. 2-0, Derby looking good. Coventry short of firepower again. It's been their weakest point in an otherwise successful season. Coventry stormed into an impressive lead at Southampton. Keith Thompson supplying the cross, which eventually finds its way to David Phillips. And how about that? Coventry were two up before the interval. Saints getting themselves into all sorts of trouble from Downs' free kick. Houchin hooks the ball back from the byline, and Gary Bannister, who was later sent off, supplies the finishing touch. The Saints gradually clawed their way back, inspired by their skipper Jimmy Case, his cross, and Rodney Wallace scores. And five minutes into injury time, Kevin Moore denied Coventry the win with a terrific header. 2-2, the final score. Snowden with a throw. Great down to Coventry, then Nevin for Everton, and here's Peter Reid driving on now. And Sheedy with the right foot. And it found a way in for Sheedy's first goal of the season. Steven Grizovic is pretty critical of his own kicking ability, but he's got good distance there. Onto the head of Ratcliffe, though. Ratcliffe again. Bracewell. And Bannister has intercepted the back pass. Round Southall and via a couple of defenders, it's in for the equaliser. Gary Bannister's goal. Great touch by Stephen to Snowden. And Coventry drawn across, leaving Sheedy, who gets his second by a more orthodox route. Agrizovic has lost it. Bracewell, the goalkeeper, still struggling to get back. What an emotional moment for Paul Bracewell. Six ankle operations between this goal and his previous one in the league. A milestone against Sheffield Wednesday. It's the Sky Blues' 900th game in the First Division. There's a marvellous five-goal display. It includes another hat-trick from David Speedy. Here's Smith. And Sedgley, that's a very good header. Smith borrows both over the ball. Kill Klein's there too. Speedy's got away. Oh, 2 0. David Speedy. Regis. Bennett with some space. That's a good cross. Speedy again! A marvellous goal from David Speedy. Got up so well. Signal obviously means something to somebody. Speedy again! That's three! His tenth goal of the season and a very good hat-trick on the day. Regis jumping. Appeals for handball, it hit Gary Mason in fact, and the referee has given it. Brian Kilkline for 5-0, which really will be rubbing salt into Wednesday's wounds. That's five from the Coventry skipper. But now, disaster for Coventry in the FA Cup. They lose 2-1 to Sutton United and join an embarrassed group of First Division teams who've lost to non-league opposition since the war. The Seamod Cup is over for Coventry as well. They lose 1-0 at Middlesbrough. But they get back in the groove in the league. Two victories over Norwich and Wimbledon. And watch out here for two more superb David Speedy goals. 
Carvajal takes this throw in. Touch to Dale Gordon. Almost got in each other's way, and what a good save from Agrizovic. Gordon. Throw in. Oh, it's fallen nicely for Gordon, but didn't he take that well? Little touch with the outside of the right foot, and then banged it in. Smith's corner. Kill Klein. Speedy. 1-1. One, one. Doesn't miss those. That's his 11th of the season. Oh, a nice turn by Regis, and a nicer pass too. Speedy. Oh, that's delicious. Last minute. Brilliant chip from Speedy, and credit to Regis for his skill in the setting it up. Here's Smith. Emerson. Smith's gone on. Oh, that could very well be a penalty. Phil Klein then against Hans Sagers. He likes to thump them from the spots, Phil Klein. Sagers has saved it. But not that time. And Pitty Jones is furious. Good header. Picked up by Fairweather. Struck well. Took a bit of a hop. And that'll be a corner for Wimbledon. Coventry in front by virtue of that goal from Brian Kilkline. And Sagers can count himself a little unlucky. But this would be a good time for Wimbledon to hit back. Wise with a corner. Jones. Scales! And they have. Scales who makes a bit of a habit of that sort of thing. And it's 1-1. Regis. Speedy. Oh, that's a glorious goal. David Speedy. So Coventry still third after those two wins, but the gap between them and the top two is growing. Coventry now eight points behind the leaders, Arsenal. It's the North East that provides the next league opposition, away to Middlesbrough and home to Newcastle. First, it's to Ayrson Park. These two sides had a seven-goal thriller earlier on in the season. Regis, well, putting his shoulder in effectively then, Cyril Regis, when he does use his strength, he remains a formidable opponent. Smith, who relies a little bit more on stealth and trickery, and the two have combined for an outstanding goal for Coventry. And here's Slavin, who tortured Coventry at Highfield Road, and he's got an equaliser for Middlesbrough. Pallister, Regis, tremendous save. To deny Regis his second. Well, it's not produced the goals of the first meeting, but there's plenty of lively entertainment. Slaven, and it's wide, but only just. Mandinia, robbed by Sedgley. Oh, that's suicide, and Hendry's onto that, and has scored. John Hendry. Line jumping. Pingle. Oh, he scored in the wrong end. That's an own goal from Frank Pingle. Sanson's kick and uh, an arm went up there. The referee's given a penalty. It appeared to be Brian Kilkleins who's protesting his innocence. But clearly there's an arm there jumping with Glenn Roder. And that's a penalty. Mirandinha against Agrizovic. 2-1. 
Now four games against London teams. Coventry beat the leaders Arsenal at home. The remaining three matches, though, produced just two points. First up, it's the Gunners in front of the season's biggest crowd at Highfield Road. Dobson's kick. Coventry with plenty forward here. Bennett. Winterburn in trouble. Speedy's gone over. And that's a penalty. Arsenal's travelling support not best pleased with the decision, but Kilcline with a chance to put Coventry in front. Luca just saved it. Ryan Burrows with the kick. Aimed at Regis. An arm went up there. That's another penalty. And while Winterburn is booked, Kilcline waits. This is a real test of his mettle. He scored this time. Coventry go in front with just eight minutes left. More signals from O'Callaghan. It's deeper this time. Thompson and very well tipped over by Agrizovic. The goalkeeper dropped it. Sheringham puts it in, but there was a push by Thompson, and the goal rightly disallowed. It's run through to Cascarino. He did very well to get the shot away, but Coventry will be furious that they let him. Five minutes left. When it's onto that, over he goes, and that'll be a penalty for Coventry. Kilkline against Parks. No problems for the Coventry skipper. Ince takes the return from Dickens. Possibilities here for West Ham. Peek across to cover. And Slater won't give that up yet. Here's Ince again. Now then. Yes. A triumph for persistence. And West Ham back on terms. Brady again. He's having more and more of an effect in midfield for West Ham. And Devonshire is away. Chased by Bennett. Slater, the fullback Dix is arriving. That's a marvellous save by Agrizovic. Phillips for Coventry, who are beginning to find one or two gaps. And there's another one for Smith. Torsved's come to meet him, and Gary Bannister will walk that in. And here's Chris Waddle. Oh, and that's a lovely goal by Chris Waddle. 1 1. So Coventry slip their sixth level on points with Nottingham Forest, but the Sky Blues have played a couple of games more. Movement in the transfer market. Dave Bennett sold to Sheffield Wednesday three months after signing a new contract, and later Keith Houchin leaves for Scotland and Hibernian. The next home match is against Liverpool. 24,000 near enough inside Highfield Road, and Liverpool really turn it on. defence felt wanting or found wanting and a lovely ball played in here and Speedy after Regis had played his part there and that's when we got the acrobatics from Bruce Cobbler Gillespie 
thought about the back pass. Regis had tucked himself in behind, though. Speedy. Crowd are loving this as well. Barnes. Aldridge. Look at this again. They put McMahon in as well from Whelan's pass. And he's in there. McMahon and it's two. No, the flag is up on the far side. Somebody must have strayed into an offside position when McMahon shot. And the goal will be ruled out. Whelan's ball was a beauty. McMahon taking it up here. You can only suspect that somebody must have strayed. Yes, it's Aldridge into an offside position. And that's why the flag was up. Regis. This is Nickel. This is turning into an excellent Liverpool performance. Staunton shots, saved under pressure there from Agrizovic. He couldn't hold uh, the ball, and Barnes playing it back for Aldridge to come thundering in. And Liverpool go two ahead. There's Aldridge on the far side, waiting to pass. And a goalkeeper's view of Liverpool's second goal. On feet. Phillips nodding it on, Regis can't quite gather again. Staunton will get it away for Liverpool, up to Beardsley. He's giving it to Speedy. Emerson. Find Smith. There's the left foot cross coming in. Phillips on the side, dinking it back again towards Cyril Regis. And touched in eventually by Bannister. They've been on the receiving end of so much in this first half. But there's Big Sewell Regis jumping well. And number 10 Bannister just the formality of turning it over the line. Bannister's goal. Coventry back in it. Comes through to Ray Houghton. A little chip by him into the path of Barnes. Will Klein backing off him. Barnes with the chip. There's Houghton arriving. And a great shot by Beardsley. Expertly saved by Ogrizovic. But the real chance fell to Ray Houghton. After some exquisite work on that left touchline by John Barnes. Getting his cross in well. Howden miscued and comes back to Beardsley and his shot well saved by Agrizovic. Gillespie, Nickel, comes to Beardsley. Trying to pick out Barnes, in turn finds McMahon. Trying to get a right foot shot there, well saved by Agrizovic. Really getting his quota of goals and shots on target from the midfield. McMahon, six goals this season in each of the last three games. He's had one disallowed already tonight. And that's a beautifully made by Agrizovic. Now can Speedy get to that? Oh, Ablett spotted it well. Picked up Gillespie. Speedy. Too far for Phillips. McMahon. He spotted Staunton. That was a marvellous ball there by McMahon. Off the referee. 
Might still come for Whelan with a shot. A little chip. Delightful goal. Ronnie Whelan. Well, when you can chip a goalkeeper as expertly as that, who stands six foot three, Steve Akrizovic, that is some goal. Delightful. You saw him look up there. There's the chip. Beyond Akrizovic, back of the net. A classic goal from Ronnie Whelan. And 3-1 now for Liverpool. Marvellous stuff. The Liverpool fans chanting the name of their skipper, Ronnie Whelan. It's a lovely ball if Smith can uh, keep it in play, which he can. He's got uh, Nicol to beat, but he gets his cross in well. Ablett with a header clear for Liverpool. Borrows to Emerson. Bannister now on his feet again. Beardsley. Touch inside. The most arrogant little push there. And McMahon is ever ready to pounce on it from midfield. And then brings in Steve Staunton. Barnes. To Staunton. Oh! Just past that far post. And uh, Aldridge right in there, claiming that he was pushed as he tried to get to it. But some uh, good work there by Steve Staunton. Out goes Akrizovic, under his body, just wide. It's gone past Turden, there's his cross coming in, off Borrows now. Staunton's up there looking for a bit of the action, and tipped over well by Akrizovic. Young fullback has been determined to get on the score sheet, has been close a couple of times and needed Grzovic and his most agile to deny him here in the last minute of the game. Nearly Easter now, Coventry take on Charlton and Southampton before meeting Derby County at the baseball ground. It's a pretty contrasting week for the Sky Blues and it starts at Selhurst Park. Bannister jumping, Regis, and here's Bannister again. Oh, he should have done better than that. Lee, Williams, Mackenzie's cross, Lee Bone jumping with the Grizovic, who's lost it, Mortimer, Gil Klein got in the way, Coventry all over the place, and the Grizovic at last tidies up. Regis jumping, Bannister's in again! Mackenzie, nicely done, and a good shot! Oh, it's hit both posts, and stayed out! Agrizovic knew nothing at all about that. No wonder he's smiling. Borrows with a throw. Kill Klein backpedalling, having problems with Shearer, and a mistake by Peak, pounced on by Danny Wallace. Burrows with some room in which to manoeuvre, and he's threaded the shot just inside the far post. 1 1, Brian Burrows. Shearer. Well, Agrizovic. Covered his angles well. Southampton are looking for offside, but the flag has stayed down. David Speedy is having a brilliant season, and it just keeps going on and on. Derby still trying to crack the Coventry resolve. Mickle White against Burrows, who impedes him. And the only question here is whether it was inside or outside, and the referee says it's not a penalty, it's a free kick on the edge. It's certainly worth another look. But the referee, absolutely right. Blades, they've done it. From a most unusual quarter, Paul Blades, with his first ever goal, the 
club's longest serving player. He's waited a long time for this. But it was well worth the wait, wasn't it? Next, it's Norwich at home. Now, Norwich have faltered recently in the championship chase. They desperately need a win at Highfield Road. Coventry, though, aren't in the mood to oblige. Coventry is certainly Norwich's bogey side. The records show only two Norwich victories here at Highfield Road in league competition. Only one since the war. That was back in 1980 when Greg Downs got the crucial Norwich goal. Downs now with Coventry, of course. He was a member of that FA Cup winning side. But he's out of favour here at the moment and looking for a move. But in Coventry kit today, Greg's four-year-old son, Gareth, on the right. And on the left, five-year-old Chris Agrizovic, the son of the Coventry goalkeeper, Steve Agrizovic. Norwich City kick off with so much to play for over the next 90 minutes. Coventry likewise over the rest of the season. They've never finished higher than sixth in the first division. They're seventh at the moment. Grizovic with a long kick that Butterworth and Linigan were both attracted to. There was no challenge from Coventry. Well, Fleck at his best has certainly been missed over the last couple of months. He's had some recent appearances as a substitute and did play the first 45 minutes on Easter Monday against West Ham. But he assured me just before the kickoff that he's not feeling any problems with the knee that's had the operation. Difficult bounce there for Emerson, and it's Coney who takes it up for Norwich. Gordon has come infield, Fleck arriving on the scene now. Butterworth, the former Coventry player, Phelan. This is Trevor Putney. And Coney going in with Agrizovic. Free kick has been given. Steve Agrizovic, who's not missed a game over the last seven seasons for Shrewsbury and over the last five for Coventry. And he got a bit of a bump then but he's the most resilient of characters. Over those seven seasons, 333 games in all. It's a splendid record. Emerson. Here's David Smith. Phelan. Tony Dobson playing at left back for Coventry, who's taken the place of Greg Downs. Ian Culverhouse, who didn't make the grade with Tottenham, he had a couple of league games for Spurs back in the 83 84 season, but has settled into a very sound professional with Norwich City. On from Coney, the second header from Fleck. Good support from Putney, and Townsend galloping up too. It's Townsend, and it's ended up in the back of the net with Fleck claiming it. And Peak was stretching as well. And Norwich have a very important goal with a sweeping move. Townsend whipped it in, and Fleck and Peak. Both lunge for the cross. Norwich City lead 1-0. The goal in the 14th minute. Phillips. And Culverhouse has to turn it behind for a corner. Well, Fleck had nipped in. Norwich looking to defend the lead that the leading scorer has given. And that's his 14th of the season. Dobson, that was a tricky bounce, but he was able to recover it 
under no undue stress. The young players certainly wear their hair short these days. Burrows reacted a little quicker than Putney then. Emerson. Smith looking to turn Culverhouse, who looked at the referee hoping to get a free kick. It wasn't forthcoming. Dobson. And now the whistle goes in Coventry's favour. Dale Gordon catching the trailing leg of Tony Dobson. The sweat starting to show on the brows now. Coventry needing to put in the extra effort, a goal down. Smith. Slack in the way. Here's Burrows. Putney was on him in a flash. Bill Klein, and then Townsend couldn't gather it in for Norwich, Speedy, Sedgley for Regis, and he turned to Phelan and that was a very calm play by Michael Phelan, Regis actually was aware that David Smith was free to the commentary left, but also aware of that was Michael Phelan, and that was the type of work that Phelan has been doing up and down the land this season as a defender or as a midfield man for Norwich and Phelan makes the forward run now it's football that's brought him into the England squad Fleck, Putney Dobson Regis holds it up Sedgley, Speedy is onside, he's got a long way to go but it's Speedy against Gunn and it breaks for Phillips, 1-1, Gunn has stayed down. David Speedy led the charge for Coventry and the flag stayed down. Brian Gunn committed himself and damaged himself. Phillips just had an empty net to aim at and he found it. So after 24 minutes, Coventry have pulled it level and left Norwich with two problems. First of all, to regain the lead secondly to regain the services of their goalkeeper well Speedy who caught Norwich square it was a tight decision but the linesman was right in line and then pushed the ball too far ahead at the end of his run Gunn came and seemed to have it lost it in the challenge and was hurt in the challenge and it couldn't have fallen better for Phillips so the game restarts with Gunn still just recovering his full fitness. Coney. A good and selfish foil for others, Dean Coney. Phelan took the shot early and it was wide. Certainly not a prolific goal scorer from midfield, Michael Phelan, but that was a very encouraging run for Norwich to gamble that the ball might run on behind Fleck. He took the shot as Agrizovic was coming out, beat the goalkeeper, but beat the post. Dobson. Here's Fleck. on both sides playing well and that's why there's a very enjoyable feel to this match a combination of the power of Regis and the live wire approach of Speedy who 
It's Brian Burrows to take the free kick. Kill Klein, Speedy's offside. Oh, what a shame for him. He was clearly offside, but it was wonderful improvisation to steer the header in. It came very quickly at him after Kill Klein had met Burrows' free kick. And it was a lovely reflex action from Speedy, but the goal doesn't count. Conviction. Smith to take it. And Norwich desperate here to avoid conceding a goal and going behind before half time. Regis and Speedy off the post. It stayed in play. And that was a let off for Norwich City. The two central characters, Regis and Speedy. Townsend. It seemed as though he was going to be beaten by the pitch, but he made a quick recovery, Townsend. And Norwich were lucky they recovered from what happened at the other end when David Speedy hit a post after Regis had met the corner first of all. Gunn put up an arm to keep it out. In came Speedy, and it was the top of the post and bar. Where the ball struck. Peak. And it fell for Regis. To his left is Dave Smith. Townsend trying to find a way out. But Anderson was a difficult barrier for him then. Smith. Dobson. Hoisted in. Regis will go for this one and beat Gunn to it. No foul. The goalkeeper let off then. Regis was up well, but it still should have been Brian Gunn's ball. But Linigan had to retrieve the situation. It wasn't going in, in fact. But Linigan could take no chances and belted it away for the corner. much talk about the different styles of play in the English First Division. It's a long ball now for Speedy. Regis, that came through at a skimming pace. Norwich caught out by the first ball up to Speedy, who held it up beautifully. Regis connected cleanly. into the centre and he can wait there because Crook has comprehensively felled David Smith. Smith who comes from Gloucestershire in the southwest. Not normally an area that produces too many players at the top level. Very uh, bright young man as well actually turned down a chance of going to university to concentrate on his football. Emerson takes it. Gunn doesn't get there. Speedy! It's turning into a harrowing second half for Brian Gunn. Fellow Scott Speedy. That's him with consolation there. Gunn came, beaten by Speedy, and Speedy was so alert and unlucky in the end not to be able to turn it in. Pumped in towards Regis. It'll run on for Speedy, it'll Phillips. 
Speedy! He deserves it. The scourge of Norwich at Carrow Road in January, where he scored twice. And he's now got the goal here for McCompetry 2 1 in front in the 68th minute. It looked as though Phillips would have his second. Gunn was down, but it rolled out to Speedy, and his aim was unerring. And everything that's being hit at crucial stages in recent matches at Gunn isn't sticking. Two goals, and Nottingham Forest rebounds off the goalkeeper. Well, it seemed inevitable that he would score, so much as he contributed to this game. And for David Stringer's side, Norwich City, it's looking now like a fourth defeat in five games in the first division. Townsend sold Crook short, Smith was in so sharply, set up Speedy and David Ellery has given the penalty it looked as though Speedy had given the goalkeeper the chance to get the ball quite safely and Norwich are furious here it might not matter too much in the long run but down went Speedy and from that angle it certainly looked a foul. Brian Gunn's protests have led to a yellow card and Gunn is still talking, he's been sent off. Gunn has been sent off. And Norwich City's championship challenge is ending in a very distasteful way. The goalkeeper goes for disputing the penalty awarded against him. And hands the jersey to Mark Bowen. Well, Norwich City have given the first division season so much that has been good this season. But the pain of another defeat, their third in a row, too much for Gunn. So the left back has the going goal to face a penalty. And he faces Brian Kilcline. And that's not an enviable task, even for a regular goalkeeper, because Kilcline really packs a wallop in the right foot. And he loves to blast his penalties. Now, I wonder whether he'll be concerned at facing not a regular goalkeeper. <laughs> he was. So it's still 2-1. And I wonder what Brian Gunn thinks about it all, even if he knows about it. He's gone to the dressing room. But Bowling survived. Kilcline missed. But now Bowen's hit a goal kick, straight at Speedy. It's a sensational end here. This is Phillips and Regis, no! Dear, oh dear. Put back beautifully by Phillips. It was a goal that was gaping for Regis. And he couldn't even force Bowen into a save. It's all over. Norwich have lost with a nasty taste at the end of it. Dave Stringer has his goalkeeper Brian Gunn sent off. But almost single-handedly, David Speedy has disrupted Norwich's season. A winning goal here to add to the two he got at Carrow Road in Coventry's win there in January. So he's really been responsible for Norwich losing six points. This after Robert Fleck had 
have given Norwich the lead on their bogey ground. And David Phillips had equalised. But a final score at Highfield Road. Coventry City 2, Norwich City 1. What a dramatic finale. Coventry still right up there with the big boys in sixth place. 49 points from 33 games. Next in the league, it's Luton Town away on the plastic, then Queen's Park Rangers at home. Coventry take just one point. That's in this game with Luton. Still it's goalless. What can Luton do here? Dreyer! At last they've broken through. John Dreyer. Hill. Sedgley's underneath that. That's interesting. Regis. Oh, it's gone in there. Cyril Regis will claim it. That's a good cross. Ranger still hasn't passed. Here's Danny Wilson. Oh, pass Smith all too comfortably. Was that handball? The referee says so. Wilson from the spot. Oh, Grzybic just saved it. Wilson again. 2-1 at the second attempt. Downs with the kick. Foster didn't make that. Smith did. 2-2. And Luton are committing suicide here. That's another gift. Number three, Wayne Faraday, who's worn so many different shirts this season. Clark's cross. And Justin Channing, the right back, arrived just at the right time to give Queen's Park Rangers the lead. Sinton. Spackman, they changed the angle and it produced the reward, a goal from Colin Clark. Reed. A little touch from Spackman and then from Clark. First time from Allen. Spackman. Clark, what a signing he's turning out to be for Trevor Francis. Five goals now for Clark in this his eighth game for the club. Now it's Manchester United at Old Trafford. Coventry beat the Reds earlier in the season. Can they repeat that success? Here are the highlights. Yeah. Played for Robson. Good work by Agrizovic. That's the Robson trademark. That's unsuspected dash from the midfield and undetected. McClare found him beautifully. Robson on the end of it. And good work there by Agrizovic. Emerson. McGrath. White side. Phil Klein again. Paul McGraw once more. Martin. One of the younger United School. Just 21 years old, Lee Martin. And now McClare. Getting away from Peak. Right side's on the far side, and it's saved again by Ogrizovic. Yet to score since his return, Norman Whiteside. In fact, his last goal for United was 14 months ago against Derby County. Good work here by McClare. Lifted into the box, flicked on. I think it was by Mark Hughes there. And Whiteside's header saved again by Ogrizovic. Robson taking it on. His enthusiasm is never ever diminished and there's Robson going through a shot against the crossbar of Coventry City real frustration there for the Manchester United captain and as I say such an amazing inspiration to them when you think for example he played in that important World Cup qualifier for England on Wednesday and against Albania and here he is still a full of fire and uh, good intentions and so unlucky with that shot against the crossbar Robson turning away nicely from Beardsmore, giving himself time, planting it forward again towards Regis. There's that big man obliging with the header again, but 
McGrath at the moment looks unbeatable. Regis once more. Smith. Bannister's in the middle. Phillips is in the middle. Speedy is coming up quickly for Coventry. Can Smith get it across? He's got problems because Robson's also arrived. But here's Smith again. Bannister looking to shoot on the turn. A fine goal for Coventry. And Leighton is beaten at last with a splendid shot on the turn by Gary Bannister. After some excellent work on that far touchline by Smith, I thought he must have lost it when Robson arrived. But he took the ball in there. Here's Bannister. McGrath at the back of him. And a lovely shot on the turn just inside the post. And from this angle again. Bannister. There's the shot on the turn. Ball in the net. Coventry ahead. So the score then, Manchester United nil, Coventry City 1, Gary Bannister the scorer. Duxbury. Robson. Bruce. his ninth goal of the season and John Sillett creates a great team spirit within this Coventry club and he'll be delighted with the way it's going this afternoon not happy with that though <laughs> beating Regis now Bruce came off the referee that time and it might fall for Bannister again who's got Regis in the middle and he's planted it wide that was a real good opening there for Coventry when a ricochet suddenly gave them an extra man up front and uh, Bannister's pass was an excellent one for Regis there it is the big man's finishing left a little bit to be desired. Well, that's a Coventry double over United. It's the last win of the season, though. The final two games against the Villa and Nottingham Forest both finish as draws. But there are goals to savour. One or two anxious faces in that Villa side. Their last game of the season and they're desperate for the points. Gage Platt oh that's a fabulous goal well that'll do their confidence no harm at all Smith Coventry still probing hoping to get something back Phillips has done well Speedy is square there he is and Bannister 1-1 Gary Bannister nil-nil just as it was at the city ground Livingston blocked by Walker well blocked too but this is Clark and it's gone through the goalkeeper Webb well, Forrest had begun to give signs of settling for a point well they might have one now Webb's shot is deflected in for the equaliser Speedy. Oh, that's a great turn. Smith joining Regis in the middle, but it's Regis with a thumping header. Three goals in six minutes, really changing the climate of this match. Tremendous finale. Parker. Pierce. Parker setting it up for Webb. Well hit, Webb again, Clough, 
They looked offside, but the goal stands. So Coventry sky high all season. Always up with the leading group. They finish in seventh place, 55 points from the 38 matches. A very successful campaign for John Sillett's men. The goal scorers, let's take a look at them. David Speedy, what a contribution from him. 14 in the league, one in the cup, 15 in all. Gary Bannister, the only other player to get into double figures with 10. Cyril Regis, six in the league for Big Cyril. And Brian Kilkline, the skipper, five goals, all from the penalty spot. He missed a few as well, didn't he? We're going to leave you with the goal of the season from David Speedy, an outrageous piece of skill from the little Scot that underlines his immense contribution to Coventry's success.